Greetings. I'm Robert Stevenson, and I want to welcome you on behalf of Alice Chalmers. We feel that the film we made and which you are about to see is more than just another industry film. The challenge of six billion, in a sense, depicts graphically circumstances surrounding man's ability to survive on this planet. But the subject matter is treated in a different way. Most efforts that come to grips with this broad challenge approach it from a single perspective overpopulation, for one, or the problem of feeding six billion persons by the year 2000. These are meaningful subjects which are being faced today by knowledgeable people, and they should be if we are going to resolve them in good time. However, the challenge of six billion doesn't follow the path of the sociologist or the demographer. It is really a reflection of our own involvement as a manufacturing company in helping nations around the world solve problems that are so basic that they do indeed touch on the question of survival. The challenge of six billion takes you to South America, to Africa, to Europe, to Asia, and you may be surprised to note to Central California. By way of illustrating that no nation, no people is exempt. I think that you will find our involvement in these world problems may reflect a different perspective, and it is this. The problem of survival for all of us in all parts of the world is not one-dimensional. It is not only overpopulation, although this is certainly a pressing consideration. It is not food alone, although this surely becomes more critical as populations grow, but really it could be considered a combination of at least four basic fundamental elements, providing food, water, power, and transportation in ever greater amounts to meet what surely will be a constantly increasing requirement. Most of us accept the necessity for food and clean water. Few of us realize the importance of energy as an instrument of economic survival. Even fewer appreciate the life-sustaining importance of moving goods and supplies, food and medicine, equipment and people with dispatch and efficiency. This is the message of the challenge of six billion. It suggests that these needs can be and are being met. This is being done on a scale not yet sufficient to be sure, but we have the capability to do much more. It holds out the promise that modern technology and science, themselves the creation of modern man, can fashion a better tomorrow for all of us. The challenge of six billion is a view from the perspective of American industry. It is a message of hope. Man is constantly striving to maintain his place on earth. challenge of meeting the needs of people throughout the world. Only by educating our children and alerting ourselves to the urgent need for better use of our present technologies and the development of new ones will we be able to meet the challenge. We must face the reality of three billion people on earth today, six billion just 30 years from now. We must face the demands that this places upon our natural resources. We must face the task of building a new and better world. And we will. Brasilia, capital city of Brazil, is a splendid architectural symbol for the city of tomorrow. As architects for the world of tomorrow, 
we must build the very best we can. We must begin to draw our plans and act today so that our children and our children's children will enjoy a more bountiful world. With the machines and the technological skills man has now, he can change, build, improve. Not in any one place, not in any one country, everywhere, around the world. The world needs more usable water and more food, more transportation, more power to move our machines. We must have these in greater amounts than ever before. We have the research, the industrial know-how, the technology, the capability, and we must sow these things like seeds for all mankind. This is industry at work, helping to assure a more secure tomorrow. For what man can imagine and design, and what man can manufacture in his great factories, he can ship to other countries, share with other people. Brazil is a nation larger than the continental United States, with fewer roads than the state of Maine. Belang, a beautiful and historic city near the mouth of the Amazon, is separated from Brasilia by 2,000 miles of jungle. Moving people, food and industrial goods across such distances is a huge problem. Men are now linking this harbor city to the villages and cities of central Brazil by carving through jungles to solve this transportation problem. Ten years ago, this spot was jungle, considered impenetrable. Today, it's a truck stop, thanks to man's determination. are steadily being widened, the curves made straighter. The long miles that separate Belang Harbor from the interior of Brazil must be shortened and kept open so that trucks can move the rubber, paper, food and industrial products that Brazil uses in ever increasing quantity. And so men and machinery work without ceasing, pushing roads over swamps through hills, across rivers, building a transportation network. Halfway across the world, other transportation problems are being solved. Istanbul, Turkey has walls built by Roman engineers who designed the future now 2,000 years in our past. Modern technology sends a highway through the arches of an ancient Roman aqueduct without destroying its beauty. And modern traffic crowds the busy streets at the Galata Bridge that spans the famous Golden Horn. Long vanished Turkish architects have decorated the slopes of Istanbul with domes of splendor, a ring of spired mosques that overlook the teeming straits the water gap that separates Europe from Asia. To the water's edge at Istanbul run rails from Europe. Here, over the years, east and west have traded railroad cars loaded with produce and supplies. The trains are ferried across the Bosporus to and from the shores of Asia. This is no longer transportation enough. New passageways must be found. Across Turkey, close to the border of Iran, a transportation project is underway to solve the need. Van, Turkey is the site of a new harbor, 
one end of a rail ferry. It is part of a $10 million project that will span Turkey and link the West to Asia. Men and goods of the future will, for the first time in history, travel by direct rail from Paris to Pakistan. Construction on this epic scale demands the best that rugged machines can deliver. Here in the Turkish countryside, small family groups have pitched their tents in windy fields to help build the future with their own hands. From oldsters down to grandsons, everybody labors. Patiently, they break the mountains into stones. Their goal, a ribbon of twin steel rails that will link their lives to the outside world. The hand-hewn rock becomes ballast for a railroad bed. This grand-scale transportation project, when completed, will leap through the centuries from nomad shepherd life to an industrialized nation. Close beside Lake Van stands majestic Castle Van, a towering battlement begun a thousand years before the birth of Christ. In its shadow, in the neighboring villages, life goes on little changed from horse and wagon days. But men with vision have determined that their children's world will have a different look. For tomorrow here, even railroads will not be enough. Farmers are being urged to increase their flocks and crops. To tie the villages closer to the marketplace, a network of main and secondary roads are being developed by the Turkish government. In close cooperation, local authorities join to enlarge and maintain the transportation system. More usable water is another challenge to be met. The windmill has long been a symbol of water. On the plains of Lassifi, on the Isle of Crete, men have wooed their water from the earth for 400 years in this way. The greatest natural resource that man has ever known, harnessed to the wind in the valley of the 20,000 windmills. Each farmer irrigates his tiny plot in personal fashion, as did his fathers before him. Soon, the pressure of progress will modernize this valley too, and the methods of an older time will surrender to the new, as they are around the world. When water is brought to the desert, lands can be reclaimed, and Edens built on grains of sand. In California's Imperial Valley, large-scale irrigation projects bring fresh life to the soil. High-capacity pumps are nourishing this green treasure, soaking once arid lands with life-giving water. The miracle has been repeated anew at the California Central Valley Project. This pumping and water storage system has proven so successful that a second development has been planned, a $45 million investment. Pumping stations are being equipped with powerful vertical turbine pumps to fill underground reservoirs for later use. There is as much water in the world today as when life emerged from the steaming sea. But man must hoard it and direct the water where he needs it, or he will suffer as if there were no water at all. This 
is a lesson learned well by one of the great cities of the world, Rio de Janeiro. Here, forward-looking men have wisely planned the use of nature's great gift of water. Rio's three and a half million people formerly depended on rainfall for their water supply. The result was that each year, its people suffered from a drought. Today, Rio enjoys one of the most extensive water systems in the world. Resourceful engineers have diverted a portion of the river Guando. Using gravity as an ally, water is filtered and purified as it flows into the great Lamirao pumping station. station is efficiently controlled above ground by the latest instrumentation. While more than 20 stories below, in caverns hewn from solid rock, great pumps churn to bless mankind with the miracle of clean water. Water enough for today and future needs beyond the year 2000. Water enough for the children of our children to enjoy. Kerala, the southernmost state of India, there is no shortage of water. In countries where rice paddies checkerboard the landscape, the problem has always been to get the water where man can best make use of it. He can use it for irrigation, or to help meet the challenging need for more electric power. A mere handful of years ago, there was no human habitat here to mark man's mastery over his environment. Then, forward-looking men of two nations, India and the United States, carved from virgin jungle a great hydroelectric power station, Sabaragiri. Even now, a lookout is maintained to frighten away elephants. Yet children live here safely with their parents who operate the power plant. Behind the dams of Kaki and of Pamba, one monsoon season can fill mountain lakes with latent power. Water flows through 10 miles of mountain tunnels to reach the penstocks of Sabaragiri. The power station took four years and $10 million to build. Walls were erected by the muscle power of men. Still today, the heavy transformers must be set in place by hand. The newest electrical generating equipment extracts energy from the water. And the Sabaragiri station sends power across the land for everything from sewing machines to oil refineries. And India takes a giant step toward an industrialized future. In every country, with each passing second, the need for power multiplies. More power to run our cities, our factories, and our farms. Since power loads today must be carried across ever longer distances, man has had to innovate new higher capacity equipment. EHV, extra high voltage transmission, uses mammoth power lines and transformers to power nations and makes it possible to greatly increase electric power available to cities of the world. These giant transformers are put through many reliability tests. And to qualify for service, they must withstand four million volts of man-made lightning. However, the power sources of today are not enough to ensure man's conquest of space. To tap new and greater sources of power, 
American industry cooperating with the nation's space program is pushing hard into the future. One new source is the fuel cell, which converts chemical energy into electrical energy. Today, astronauts flash through space in a craft served by fuel cell power. And one day, men may utilize resources on the moon and beyond. On Earth, there are certain to be other applications for this new power source. A truck, a tractor, or a lift truck, powered by a fuel cell, will give tomorrow's world a clean, efficient source of electrical power. A different kind of power is the power of hunger. Enough food for today will never again guarantee enough for tomorrow. There can be no turning back the human tide, those six billion people predicted by the year 2000. In the age-old ways of planting and harvesting by hand, men and women working with simple hand tools could feed villages. In little valleys around the world, time has stood still and grain is harvested and gleaned in centuries-old style. But never could these ancient methods support life in our great cities today. Caterini, Greece, progressive men give modern farm equipment the right of way on their city streets. In Caterini, when crops are ready for harvesting, there is only so much time to get the job done. Modern machinery is the only answer. The farmers work in the shadow of Mount Olympus, home of the mythical Greek gods. These men rely on the newest equipment to get their grain and straw from field to market. Athens, home of legends, gods and beauty. Today, one of the major home markets for the farm produce of Greece. History crowded pages fill the libraries of the world with the glory of Athens. Birthplace of Socrates, Plato, Aristotle, fathers of philosophy. On the Acropolis, people once were paid to fill the theaters to learn the secrets of the human soul. Upon these stones walked citizens of the Golden Age arguing the merits of democracy 25 centuries ago. From Athena's marbled home, the Parthenon, down the hillside went the populace to buy their daily bread. Their marketplace, the Agora, has been gone for centuries. Today, the needs of men are renewing that place of trade with a modern marketplace, built on the same historic site. The population explosion demands that old methods and places give way to new. Greece had its Roman builders too. Hadrian gave something of his own majesty to this temple of Zeus. The majesty remains today. While urban renewal projects now set off this temple by a round of parks and freeways to serve the needs of modern marketplaces. Here extends a vast, wild world that is a treasure house of untapped natural resources, Africa. Once the dark continent, today opening its book of secrets for everyone to see. Where once only the hardiest explorer dared to travel, whole families now take excursion boats along the upper Nile.
jungles are on the verge of becoming great open zoos. There still is wonder and mystery in the jungle depths. But man's interest in the Africa of tomorrow is because this giant continent may become an agricultural center to help supply food to other parts of the world. Close to the headwaters of the Nile lies the city of Kampala, capital of the emerging nation, Uganda. These interesting people in their colorful dress are advancing with rapid steps toward their own better tomorrow. Collaboration between men and rugged machines is settling Uganda's red dust into the largest sugar plantation in the world. first-rate agricultural equipment are taming the stubborn earth, fertilizing the soil, bringing new income to this part of East Africa. Harvesting is hard handwork, but the men go at it with boundless energy. They know this harvest means a better way of life for them and their families. Ingenious equipment has been especially designed to handle the cane. Out of the wilderness, modern technology is bringing life-giving food in ever-increasing quantities. A giant continent, a giant plantation. And so in North America and many lands around the earth, people and machines become soldiers in the battle for the future. With know-how gained from research, man is planting in narrow rows to increase his food production to meet the growing demand for food. Around the world, men with the future in their eyes are making better use of all of our natural resources finding new ways to use all of the gifts of nature. Wherever man mines iron ore, giant machines like these are at work. The huge balling drums roll out two million tons of high-grade iron pellets a year to meet the ever-increasing demand for steel. The men who work here are dwarfed by this tremendous kiln. Great kiln systems are so versatile that American industry employs them for cement making and other uses and is sharing this know-how with the people of the world from Australia to South America to the Arctic Circle. New concepts, new technology and new machines are already serving tomorrow's world. By improving and strengthening our transportation systems, by conservation and use of water and other natural resources, by boosting the magnitude of power sources and its transmission, by finding new places, new ways to increase our food supply, man is meeting the challenge. Only through the efforts of innovative, dynamic, research-minded companies, those with unique capabilities to push forward the horizons of technology, only through vision and determination will mankind achieve a sunny tomorrow for his children and their children. This is a report of one such company facing the challenge of the six billion on this small planet. The world we share in common.